Kathleen Spihar, the Executive Director of COCA, the Council on Culture and Arts in Tallahassee, Florida. My pronouns are she, hers, and I come to you from the ancestral lands of the Apache, Appalachian Nation, the Muskegee Creek Nation, the Misakoshi Tribe of Florida, and the Seminole Tribe of Florida. COCA is a local arts agency for Tallahassee and Leon County, and we provide services, support, and advocacy for artists, arts, culture, history, and heritage organizations and businesses. And I'm completely delighted to host co-host today's webinar in partnership with Domi Station. The work of both of our nonprofits connect businesses, nonprofits, startups, and entrepreneurs with the resources they need to be successful. So we teamed up to discuss the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Um, I, I, um, a new one-of-a-kind program that provides substantial funding to um, arts and the arts industry, and to hear from our panel of panel of community experts, which have applied or have been awarded or are administered in the program. So they are in order. If you could just wave when I call your name, please, Darius Doc Baker from Tallahassee Nights Live. Hey. And we've got uh, Gary Anton from the Bla Bradfordville Blues Club. Theresa Davis from Theater Tallahassee. And then we have, uh, who I'm hoping is gonna come back on video again, um, Keith so Bowers, good. who is from Florida SBDC of Florida A&M University. And then I'm Kathleen Speher from COCA as your moderator. So we're gonna give a, 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 just a brief overview of the program and then each panelist is gonna have a chance to share. So I'm just gonna share some slides on the basic program and then invite um, Keith, if, if Keith is available, to join me and add at comments. And again, this is, it's, it's a long <laughs> presentation. So um, I'm just gonna briefly go over these slides and then I'll have the slides available uh, for you. I'll have, uh, give them, provide them to Domi and you will definitely receive those uh, before uh, at the end of the presentation today. So here we go. I'm gonna do a little sh uh, screen sharing here. And then start this from the beginning. Okay, and then switch this over. So you should be able to see the screen. And if you can't see my screen, not presenter's view, but regular view, please let me know. I'm not hearing anything, so it looks like this is good. So what is the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant? Um, it is this uh, economic aid to hard hit small businesses, nonprofits, and venues. It was, it, it's part of a legislation that was passed in December of 2020, and then it was amended again in March of 2021 as part of the American Rescue Plan Act. There's over $16 billion to grant for shuttered venues to be administrated by the SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance. And that each eligible applicant qualifies for grants that equal 45% of their gross earned revenue with the maximum amount available of about up to $10 million. And the other great thing about this program is that about $2 billion is reserved for eligible applicants up to 50 full-time employees. So a lot of emphasis here on uh, helping small businesses. It's also a grant, not a loan. So if you're a for-profit business, if you're a proprietorship, if you're a nonprofit organization, if you're a government entity, you can apply for this money and it is a grant, not a loan. You don't have to pay it back. So some eligible entities include live venue operators, um, theater producers, uh, performing arts organization operators, um, museums and zoos and aquariums that are eligible, some motion picture theater operators, uh, talent representatives, and uh, the, all those uh, qualifications need to match the eligibility that's available at the uh, at this, uh, Small Business Administration site. Um, the, also, the other great thing that's really unique about this program is that it allows you to pay for expenses that aren't necessarily covered by either other stimulus programs or even other grant programs. For example, you can make uh, use this uh, for mortgage payments or for debt payments. You can use this money for state and local taxes and fees uh, for anything that's been canceled in uh, while your uh, your venue was uh, or your operations were shuttered. Um, it can co cover some of those expenses, um, and it is just really unique in that way. Um, the uh, if you decide to apply for the program, one of the things that you need to there's a couple you need there's a fair amount of things that need to be document ready, and our experts are going to uh, get into that. But you do need to make sure that you have a Dunn and Bradstreet number, 
and you need to make sure that you're registered at sam.gov. Um, the SBA has had a tremendous um, amount of information on their website. They have a pre-application list, um, they have video tutorials, they have eligibility matrices, and all sorts of things to help you um, get this, uh, this application out the door. And uh, some, some uh, tips about this application that, again, we can talk about here with our panel in just a couple of minutes, is that um, if you are, uh, if you haven't done it yet, you want to make sure that your 2020 tax returns are done before applying. We've also talked about the Dunn and Bradstreet number already and the SAM.gov uh, registration. Um, and that uh, mainly it's that that you uh, you are document ready and that you've got your your budget uh, worked out before you need to go um, and hit that send button. The other great thing about this legislation is that it's kind of a twofer. So you can apply for the, the money. If you get awarded, there's also a possibility that you will get a supplemental award um, after the priority periods have passed. And we'll we'll talk about that in just a couple minutes here. Um, the uh, the Small Business Administration is doing also a really good job at um, giving daily reports. So here's an example of, of where the, the program is so far. So you can see at the very top image there, you've got how many applications have been submitted and how many grants have so far have been awarded. This um, changes daily. And you can see that the uh, even though the amount of, of requested funding right now is at $12 billion, we still have you know $4.25 billion to give out. And the amount of the awards so far is a, a little over um, kind of between six and seven, or excuse me, seven and $8 billion. Um, so you can, again, track this on a, there's a plenty, plenty of resources to give out. Um, and in the, the uh, Tallahassee Land County region so far, we've we've gotten um, over a million dollars in awards. Um, the the awards by venue type are also really interesting. So you can see on the left hand side of the screen there that the live venue operators and performing arts organizations have uh, gotten the most uh, awards, and then it kind of goes to talent representatives, and then motion picture and uh, and uh, museum operators, and theatrical producers after that. And then in Florida itself. Um, if we look down here, um, we can see Florida has got about 400, uh, 430, going on $431 million worth of this funding so far that's been distributed um, or is going to be distributed st st statewide. So I'm going to um, stop right there and stop sharing my screen um, and uh, get into a um, brief overview of the program. I'm going to pause it for a second to see with Keith, I kind of went through those slides and this is, this is your wheelhouse. So <laughs> wanted to see whether you had anything uh, that you wanted to add before we started uh, to talk to the other panelists about um, themselves and what their experiences have been with this program so far. Yeah, thank you, Kathleen. You did a very thorough job of covering the program. And I, I just want to add that, you know, when the program first rolled out, it got off to sort of like a clunky start. But um, SBA did a really good job of going in and working out the kinks. And, um, you know, they've gone from awarding from just over 100 um, shuttered venue operators grants on June 10th to more than 10,000 to date. And you were right, um, they've awarded to date as of yesterday about $7.5 billion in grants. Um, and it's really helping venues reopen and stay open. Um, a, a, another important note is that more than two thirds of the awards have gone to venues that have fewer than 10 employees. So the program is really helping um, the smallest of small businesses. So um, I, I can't say enough about this program. Oftentimes you hear about programs that the government has in place, um, but they're so inaccessible. This program is very accessible and I'm happy to be on the panel today, especially with folks that have um, received those, um, those grants and, and congratulations to you. And I look forward to participating in this conversation. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to go ahead and over and bring our other panelists in to share more. And so we've got uh, Gary and Theresa and, and uh, Doc and, uh, to share today. So what I'd like, love for the three of you to do um, is to share um, kind of what your business or organization does. Just give us a real brief overview about, about that and a bit about how the pandemic has impacted your, vis your business and a, a bit about SBOG and why you decided to apply. So can we start with you, Theresa? Um, certainly. Um, I'm Theresa Davis. I'm the executive director of Theater Tallahassee. 
Um, theater Tallahassee is a community theater in Tallahassee. We've been here since uh, 1949. So we've been serving the community for over 70 years. Um, the, the pandemic really hurt uh, everyone, but it really hurt uh, arts organizations and theaters. Um, we were forced to close our doors on March 17th, 2020, and we um, were finally able to reopen to limited audiences for our final show of the season in June, 2021. Um, so we we switched to some virtual programming, which isn't um, maybe everybody's cup of tea for live theater because you need that live theater experience and actually being there. We wanted to still provide product for our, for our patrons. Um, so we did our best of, of recording our shows and putting them out there. Um, we are looking forward to reopening um, for a full season in August. Um, but we lost um, about 82% of our income last year with our doors closed. And that was including our virtual programming and everything. So um, it, it was a no brainer for me to apply for the shuttered venues. Um, it's not a competitive grant. So if you qualify for it, you will get the money. Um, so I, I encourage anyone who, who can qualify for this to actually take a chance. I mean, you have, you've got nothing to lose. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your award. That's Thank really you. fantastic news. Let's, let's jump over to you, Doc. Hi. Um, number one, I just want to, you know, thank you for having me. It's just an honor to be on a panel with such amazing guests. Uh, most of them I know. And uh, I'm Darius Dr. Baker, the executive director of Tallahassee Nights Live, founder, creator. We are 16 year production here in Tallahassee that uh, basically travels and um, we're a platform for artists to go to the next level. Um, it's, it's just a love that I've had, a vision that God gave me and that we move forward. And we have people that's gone through Tallahassee Nights Live that have won Grammys and all types of awards. And it's just, a, um, it's just a blessing to be able to be that platform or one of the many platforms here in Tallahassee with Tallahassee Nights Live. Um, like I said, 16 years, we've never experienced something like this. Uh, none of us have. <laughs> and when this happened, we actually had a sold out, um, Cruise, our third one that was on uh, Carnival. Mm -hmm. Of course, we had to we had to cancel that, refund all the money for that. We, I had a deposit down on a charter bus that's going to take us down to Orlando, uh, where we're going to port out of. Uh, of course, I didn't lose that deposit, but I mean, we were, we all were affected. So I didn't expect the uh, charter uh, company to refund that. So that's sitting. Um, we had a show that we were actually doing that had to be uh, canceled. Uh, we, uh, we've we also lost about maybe 80, 80 upwards of 85%. We haven't had a, a paid event uh, since March. It's been like 16 months. And um, when you think of what these musicians do for a living, um, a lot of musicians I, that I know personally that come through TNL, they, they, you know, they can make anywhere from $800 a week gigging, you know, professionally. It's what they do. When you cancel out all of the events, all of the uh, venues that can't have this, it, it could be detrimental to families. I, I, I've had people that say that they had, they lost apartments, they applied for rent, applied for all that type of assistance, and they couldn't keep up with it. I mean, it's really disheartening. So uh, when I heard about this grant and what it could do, um, I haven't gotten awarded for it, um, but I did apply and I spread the information to everyone. Um, I think it's a blessing. And one of the things that we do at Tallahassee Nights Live, um, we have a virtual meeting as well every Monday. I have uh, CPAs and um, um, financial advisors that come on and stress the importance of keeping up with your books, keeping up with all of your um, your expenses. Uh, as a work for hire musician, I, I, I play, I'm a musician as well, so I know when you you know some sometimes you get paid in cash at the end of the night. Sometimes you you know sometimes you don't get paid <laughs> yes. in, in some situations. But um, you know it, it, you can't look at it as being okay. Why did this person get awarded and I didn't? Most times you qualify just like the other person, but you may not have your books in order. You may not have, uh, you know, your tax returns, your schedule C's, what you, in order for uh, a lot of uh, grants and a lot of people that want to help you to know how much you lost, they got to know how much you, you would have made, how much you made, you know, and having those books in order is so important. So that's some, one of the things that we were able to um, implement through this reset. I, I look at it as it was, a, it was 
hard for all of us to go through, but it also, this pandemic gave us an opportunity to reset and start doing things the right way so we can actually get some of these um, grants and assistance that's out there to help us maintain. So uh, I'm so blessed to be a part of this and um, I'm just happy to be a part of this panel today. Thank you so much, Doc. That document ready piece is just so important. Thank oh. you so much for bringing that up. Gary, over to you. Can you talk to us a little bit about you and your experience? Sure. Uh, I appreciate being among this esteemed panel and thank you, Kathleen, for hosting this. Uh, I think it's very important for uh, small businesses and small venues like ours uh, to understand what's available. Uh, my wife and I have run the Bradfordville Blues Club since 2002. We are a small live music venue. Our max capacity is 120. Uh, so this grant uh, is designed for folks and businesses like ours that are small. We only have a couple of employees. And uh, the uh, pandemic hit us very, very hard, as it did so many other businesses, particularly those people who are in the uh, entertainment and live music industry. Uh, we lost 90% of our revenues. Our last show was March 14, 2020. Uh, and we did not have any live ticketed shows until March of 2021. Fortunately, we had community support that kept us alive. And unfortunately, many other smaller venues weren't able to stay alive. If you've been able to stay alive, if you are still in business, this program, this SBOG program, is a great opportunity uh, to get back on your feet financially. Uh, we took advantage of it. We have received our grant, and uh, uh, it is helping us uh, keep the club alive. And uh, we have reopened uh, in March of this year, starting doing outside shows, and we've moved back indoors because of the weather. Who knows what the Delta variant may bring for our indoor shows. Right. Uh, but in the event that we do have another surge, at least we have a financial cushion uh, that'll keep us going for the time being. Uh, so uh, if you're a small business, your mom and pop operation, uh, this is designed for you. You don't have to be a major operation with accountants and CPAs and tax advisors. Uh, it is a daunting task, I will say that. Uh, uh, but uh, once you put in the time and the effort and you do it right, uh, it can provide financial security uh, for your operation uh, from paying bands, to paying overhead, to paying rent, to paying contractual obligations. Uh, there is a, a great deal of benefit to uh, getting this award. It is worth the effort. It is worth the time, I promise you. Thank you for that. And I think that that gives us a really good uh, uh, transition then into the application itself. So um, that's the thing that that uh, I've heard too, is that it feels really daunting, but when you commit to it, then away you go and, and you get into this process. So can you talk a little bit about that itself, the process itself and, and what, how you approached uh, applying and also how many hours it took <laughs> to uh, to make this thing happen. I, I mean, Doc has already talked about being document ready. And so maybe we should start with that piece of it. So what does it mean to you to be document ready? And uh, let's start with you, Doc. Well, I mean, it's it, it's shown me that it could be the difference of you getting uh, getting awarded and not, you know, um, being confident in your numbers. Um, sometimes uh, people say, you know, they're kind of scary to, you know, Give that information, thinking that to make it, you know, audited and things of that nature. If your if your business is done right and you have your numbers there, it is what it is. And and, and folks want to help. Folks want to help you. So it really showed me to get a certified CPA to go back and get all of my you know get all of my documents in order. So I wouldn't be guessing. I wouldn't be you know just you know uh, estimating numbers. And it, it's it's. It could be intricate, you know, but like Gary said, it's worth it. You know, take the time. And if you have to get someone to give you that confidence, a professional to go in and make sure your numbers are in order, then uh, do that because they want to help. And the grant is there mm -hmm. for, for us to help. So I'm in the process of 
getting that help so I can, um, you know, go ahead and apply the right way. That sounds great. So we're talking about 2019 mm -hmm. uh, tax returns, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and what other documents um, did you need to put in place? And I'll just toss this out to the room. And also to you, Keith, because you're seeing all of those too, right? So um, what are some of the other documents to be document ready that you would need to make sure are in place? Well, well as, far, as, you, as far as your budgeting numbers, you actually need 2019, 2020, and then the first quarter of 2021. And you need to break those numbers, your income numbers down as earned revenue and gross revenue. Right. Um, to apply for the grant. Um, but if you go to the SVOG, they actually have provided a lot of documentation to help everyone along. There's an application checklist and there's an application user guide. And the user guide actually has every single question that is on the grant. Mm -hmm. And it gives you details of what information, what supplemental materials you need. Um, and I actually used that and made sure and it actually wrote little notes on it. This is the document I'm gonna submit with that because while there are a lot of documents, most organizations should be able to, to pull them together. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, I, I was gonna add, you know, it is, um, there is a lot of documentation, but um, having that, having it ready is, is, is the difference. Um, being, having that accessible is the difference. Um, there's a couple of nuances, especially for nonprofit organizations. So if you're a nonprofit and you're thinking about applying for the, for the grant, um, you, you have to include your 2018 tax returns if you haven't filed uh, for your um, for the 2020 tax returns. And then, you know, just um, for everyone that applies, um, you have to be able to document that you're a legally um, duly formed entity. So there's requirements that you provide that either you filed in the state of Florida as an LLC or an S corporation or C corporation, but those types of uh, um, you know business documentations and, and certifications are required. Um, and then you know, um, as Teresa has said, um, there is a very useful checklist um, that that SBA provides, and I would start there with the checklist um, yeah. before you before you you know get into the application itself. Go through the checklist. And as, as Doc has said, you know, if you need to involve your accountant um, or your bookkeeper, bring your accountant and bookkeeper into that, into the mix to make sure that you have the accurate information and that you're not guessing because you don't want to leave money on the table. And you also want to make sure that what you are submitting um, is going, you're going to get the most consideration um, to, to demonstrate the, the economic loss that you've experienced. That's good. Gary, anything more to add? Uh, yes, uh, I wholeheartedly agree with Keith. There's a, a, a great deal of documentation that the SBA makes available to the uh, One document in particular is the user guide. It actually walks you through the application. But preliminarily, there is the SBA, SVOG preliminary application checklist. You can download that at the SBA site, and that is a perfect template to begin your process of deciding what you need to do, what documentation you need. Uh, it then leads you into the application itself. I would spend some time going through the application before you put any documentation down or before you put any information down, just to get an idea of what are they looking, what they are looking for, so that you know what you have to assemble. It took us more time, I think, to assemble all of the documents that we submitted with the application than it actually did to submit their, or uh, complete the application itself. The SBA also has a number of uh, documents, uh, frequently asked questions regarding uh, the application process, uh, the post-application process, uh, very importantly, the SBA has instructional videos. They are very helpful. Most of them are short, 5, 10, 15 minutes. Highly recommend that you take a look at those videos before you start putting pencil to paper to get an idea of what is it that they want from you. Uh, and more importantly, uh, make sure you take the time to assemble the documents that they need. 
uh, you are going to have to assemble your financial statements, your tax returns, your corporate documents. Uh, there is a lot of documentation that you will have to assemble and scan because as you complete the application, they want you to attach the documents that support your statements in that application. So it's uh, imperative that you take the time to start assembling the documentation uh, so that you make sure you have everything that they need. Very importantly, the SBA requires about six or seven certifications. Do not leave any of those certifications out. Uh, that is part of the application. If you don't submit one of those certifications, your application is going to be rejected. Uh, and you could be put at the end of the list uh, if you have to go back in and make those corrections. So uh, it's important to do your homework before you start filling out the application. That's great. That's these are, this is just such great advice. So the um, when we talk about you know all these documents and putting those together, um, can you give um, anyone that's interested in applying an idea of how how should they plan for it as far as the amount of time? Like, did you did, did you do this over a couple of weeks? Did you do this over a few days? Um, how many hours um, do we? Any, even if it's a ballpark estimate of what you, you did, just so people know. Again, it's daunting, but it's completely doable. And that's what, it, and if there's shortcuts or things that you were able to do that kind of save some time, that would be really helpful to share. So uh, let me start with you, Theresa. Um, I spent well, several weeks. Um, I would go in, you know, for a few hours every day, uh, which I, watched all of their videos early on and, and looked at all of their checklists. Um, when the grant was originally supposed to open in April 8th and had a little kink and didn't happen um, and started pulling the documentation together um, because there, there, there really is a lot of documentation you need to pull together. Um, the number of hours, I'm not sure. Um, I, I am, I'm a stickler for keeping records. So I was able to get to everything um, pretty easily um, on it. It took me, one, with having everything prepared, it took me an hour and a half to actually upload all of it and fill out the grant when the application became available. But I had everything ready and laid out into what order I needed it in. And um, it, it was, it's totally worth it in the end. <laughs> About an hour and a half to upload it, and and, uh, it and then- just me, I, I spent several hours a day for prepping. several weeks pulling everything together and making sure gotcha. I had everything. Gotcha. How about you, Doc? Well, um, I was happy that it gives you the opportunity to create your portal and you can save uh, where you left off at. So that was a, a great thing. So, um, you know, weeks, you know, and I'm still doing it, you know, still kind of going through, making sure I have the right thing in order, double checking. And like I said, having a, an accountant to help me with some things, because I, I definitely didn't want to, like Keith said, you know, uh, you could hurt yourself by you know, estimating and leaving money on the table, um, you know, possibly. So that's why I'm just kind of taking my time. But it did give me that opportunity. I will say this. It was a few. It, it is daunting, but it was a few questions that were kind of, you know, easy, um, you know, to legitimize your business, asking about, um, you know, flyers, or, or news publications from this year, whatever. You know, all I had to do was just go on and screenshot a few things from uh, that year just to make sure you were doing business during those times. Um, it was a few of those question that were very easy but um yes it is a process that you know don't don't think they're just going to sit down and and do it quickly if you want to do it the right way um I, I wouldn't multi multitask at the same time dedicate your attention to it to get it done uh, the right way great thank you how about you gary uh i i agree uh it took me it took us we started in april uh, there were starts and stops. Interestingly, when they restarted it, uh, the application was different, requested more information or different information. So it's important while you are going through the process to go back to the SBA site and take a look at the updated frequently asked questions and updated information. They just posted a new frequently asked questions on July 22nd. Uh, it had information in there that I wasn't aware of beforehand. Uh, 
it's very important in determining how you set up your budget. Uh, you have to set forth in detail how you propose to use the money uh, and to make sure that uh, your proposals fit within their guidelines. Uh, the frequently asked questions uh, provide a great deal of insight into how you can use the money and how you can tie that into your budget. Uh, because once you submit the budget, that's how you have to spend the money. Uh, you are allowed to deviate maybe 10% from your uh, budget projections, uh, but it's important to make sure that you understand how am I going to use the money? We're a club that hires bands. We allocated most of our money to paying bands. They wanted contracts dating back to 2019 and 2020 with bands uh, to show that we were in fact paying bands, that they weren't playing for tips. That's part of the eligibility requirement. Uh, that one document, the preliminary application checklist goes over the eligibility issues. So uh, make sure you understand what you need to provide to them. There's one other document that's very, very important, I think, and a lot of people don't uh, may not pay a lot of attention to it, but it's the certificate of need. It's an opportunity for you as the business owner to present in a narrative format what it is you do, how you intend uh, to use the money, why you need the money. Uh, the form is basically one paragraph and says, uh, I need the money, without the money, I'm gonna go out of business. You can provide a lot more detail to guide the people who are reviewing your application uh, to give them an idea of who you are, what you do, so that it ties into all the numbers and all the documents that you have attached uh, to the application. But uh, I, I know we spent close to 40 hours uh, between assembling the documentation, preparing well ahead of time, reviewing the videos and all the documents that they have on the website uh, before we even started putting the application together. The application itself is going to take 12 hours or so, depending upon how well organized you are. Uh, but don't be deterred. Uh, it may seem like a lot of work, uh, and it is a lot of work. Uh, but it is well worth it if you can qualify because this is money you can use to keep your business alive and it is a free loan. You don't have to pay it back. You don't have to pay interest. So uh, if you want to keep your business going, uh, it is worth the effort, but you need to put the effort in to make sure you do it right and give them what they're asking for. Absolutely. That's, it's such a game changer. Thank you so much for that. You know, Keith, I was uh, thinking about, um, you know, everything that we've been talking about here from your perspective. Um, are there other things that you want to add to the conversation about what you're seeing from on your end? Uh, any tips uh, as people are, are looking at applying or, or are going to apply that, that, um, that we need to, to cover? Yeah, from, from what we're seeing, um, you know, we are seeing that people are um, attempting to take advantage of the program in terms of, um, you know, demonstrating that, that they have um, suffered an economic loss. Um, I, I think the, the best thing that what we have been advising our clients that have applied and are in the process of applying for the, uh, for the grant is to make sure that um, you, you take into account all of the information that's available for you. Um, SBA has um, a dedicated line specifically for um, those questions, and I mean we're here to help as well. But as Gary says, the the program continues to change. Um, there, there are updates to the program almost on a daily basis, so we have to stay in the loop on those things as well. So I would just say the most important thing is to be patient, um, be flexible and be transparent um, that is the, the the best way to go about applying for these funds um, and the um, again uh, there's a, a videos that will help guide you through the application process you can 
Um, SBA has a dedicated line uh, 800 number that's available from 8 o'clock until 8 p.m. Um, where if you have like, some, uh, questions about you know, technical questions or just questions in general about your application, um, once you begin the application process, as Doc has said, has said um, you'll be given sort of like a username to access your application in that portal. Um, make sure that you reference that when you contact SBA or even when you contact the Small Business Development Center because we're able to, um, you know, convey that information to the technical assistance team. But we can talk specifically about what is going on with your application. Um, and I, I think that the biggest thing is uh, the biggest, one of the, the biggest setbacks that we've seen is not having um, the, the required information at the time when you're starting to make the application. So I just think it's imperative that you kind of like plan to make this application, work through the checklist, gather that documentation. If you're not sure about what documentation or if there's some confusion because there are a lot of acronyms, there are a lot of form numbers, there are a lot of different disclosures and things that maybe for, this is your first time seeing them. Um, but before you jump in and start to address at it, pick up the phone, call the Small Business Development Center or call that hotline number and ask someone who has um, working knowledge of how the application process goes and what SBA is really asking you for, and they can explain it to you in terms that you will be able to understand. That's great. Thank you. And just to point out in the chat, uh, we did add the SBA's website. So there's a link right to the application. So thank you, Lisa Sunshine, for asking that. Uh, Lisa also had a question about um, how much all of you have received so um, or are hoping to receive. So um, can we just do a round robin on that? And then I'm going to come back to you, Keith, with a, a couple of other questions, about, especially about the awards and the supplemental and the timeline. So let's first start off with the with how much how much are we talking about here for all this work so why don't we start with you gary uh they tell you how much you're going to get you don't ask for an amount you submit a budget you submit your financials uh and they tell you what you are entitled to and that's how much uh they're going to deposit in your account we got over a hundred thousand dollars mainly over a hundred thousand dollars which for a small business like ours is uh, manna from heaven. Uh, and the key is uh, when you get that money, uh, put it into a separate interest bearing account. Do not commingle your SVOG funds with your operating account, your payroll account. Uh, talk to your financial advisors if you have an accountant, if you have a bookkeeper. Uh, but one of the first things we did, as soon as we got the money, we transferred it over to a separate SVOG account because you have to account for how you spent the money uh, during the quarterly reporting uh, periods uh, following your receipt of the grant. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to uh, best use the money. But again, your budget tells you how you can use the money. Make sure you spend time figuring out your budget. Where are you going to use the money? Is it going to paying rents? Are you going to be paying payroll? Are you going to be paying bans? Are you going to be paying uh, uh, other contractual obligations? I found out the other day uh, that for small bars like ours, we can even use the SVOG money to purchase our beer and wine from our distributors. Uh, that is very, very helpful. Uh, that's one of our biggest expenses. We can pay our insurance with this. Uh, so, uh, it's important to go ahead and, uh, make sure you, you, uh, spend time putting your budget together because no matter what you get, you're going to end up having to spend it as you said, you were going to spend it within a certain, uh, parameter, 10% or so. That's great. Thank you. How about you, Theresa? Um, Theater Tallahassee received, I mean, we have actually received it, $176,000. Um, and um, yes, it will. It, it was a game changer for the theater, of course. 
Um, and it's, um, but they do like said, they, they tell you how your amount it's based on 45% of your earned revenue from 2019. So you could go in and figure out what your, your, um, amount is going to be before you even set out on this process to apply for it. Um, and when you go to pay for it, use the money, it actually goes back to expenses paid that you incurred in 2020. So all the way back to March, 2020 through December, 2021, you can use those expenses. So you can recoup some of the losses that you, you incurred while we were closed. That's amazing. How about you, doc? I know um, it, within this process, do you have an idea of, of what you, you think that, that you may be able to get? Right. Well, I've been told by our CPA that, you know, expected to receive around 75 or 80,000. When you're looking at um, employing 36 uh, musicians uh, throughout the year, you know, um, this this will help. I really wanted to kind of give them a little cushion as well, because um, our licenses, bills and all types of expenses, they kept going. They kept going throughout the year. Um, so a lot of that I bear, you know, to pay. And, and I was blessed throughout the process. I'm, I'm the program director at Hallelujah 95.3. So I, you know, I still had a had had some income coming. Thank God. You know, a lot of the musicians uh, did didn't have any at all. You know, and um, you know that 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 this will help when awarded um, if it is to happen to kind of alleviate some of the hardships that they experienced over this past 17, 16, 17 months and uh, kind of get them back on their feet. Um, t &L, you know, with no, no, no events, no gigs, uh, some of the expenses still rolled, but it, it just kind of let lie dormant for a while throughout the uh, pandemic. So, you know, uh, through the grace, we kind of, we endured and things are opening back up and I'm happy to be at uh, Theater Tallahassee on August the 8th. That was one of the events. And so happy to have Kath Kathleen on, but due to the pandemic, you know, she knows we already, we were planning to do that event, had everything set, but you know, we had to be careful and um, and take safety first and we had to cancel it. And all of that revenue was uh, was lost, but we're gonna be back on August the 9th, August the 8th there at Theater Tallahassee. I'm so happy to be there with Kathleen and we're gonna start up again. I think things are gonna bounce back. I, I appreciate that. Yep, I appreciate your positive attitude. And we do, you know, uh, the the saying that's been used is, you know, first to close, last to open. And mm -hmm. the, the opening is happening slowly. And the, you know, the pent up demand is really helping that out. When you're talking about a financial bounce back, that's going to be so much slower, which is one of the reasons why this, uh, this legislation also had kind of what I called a twofer. So you get your award and then there's a possibility of, of another award after this. And so Keith, can you just talk a little bit about that? about the sure. supplemental yeah the, the supplemental um once you get the once you're awarded um uh, and um you have um, received the notification and the fund and the funding for the uh for the grant uh, sba will go in and reevaluate after they've worked through all of that the, the pending applications um to see if you're eligible for additional funding um or and let me, let me back up a step um if you have applied and you felt that you didn't receive the funding that you were entitled to um the process for reconsideration begins august 2nd if you apply and you were uh, for whatever reason um declined they declined your application the process for reconsideration for decline applications begin August 6th, I'm sorry, August 4th. So um, they will open the portal and then you'll be able to go in and ask for reconsideration if you didn't receive enough or if you if you were declined. Um, but the, the supplemental award, um, that is going to be earmarked for those businesses um, that have applied, received funding and still may need additional funds to get them over the hump and sba will make a determination there's not a real application process they'll you should receive an email inviting you to um for um consideration for the supplemental and they'll ask you some questions and then if if it's and, and we're hearing that it's going to mirror sort of like the economic injury disaster loan so they'll use the information that you have previously submitted as part of your application 
and make a determination if you would be eligible for more. Um, you don't ask for an amount. They basically make that determination using a formula that they have, and then they will send that amount to you if, if you're eligible or, or offer that, and then you would have to accept or decline. And can you talk that's this is really tremendous information and again just so timely since we're we're still in the process of, of trying to make all this you know happen and, and get this uh, live performance back again keith can you talk a little to us a little bit about timeline you've got the august 2nd and the august 4th uh uh, openings, portal openings for any anybody that's been declined for re, or for reconsideration. But um, the the grant program itself is is this going to chug along for a while? Because we did hear about you know taking time to get the application ready and document ready. So can you is there a timeline that the SBA has set on this program, or is this just open until the money runs out? Or what's your thoughts uh, on that? They have not set a a, a deadline for the application. Um, everything that we're hearing on our end is that they are going to leave this program open until funds are allocated. So um, that's good news. And um, as you stated, um, you know, a certain percentage has been earmarked. Uh, I believe $2 billion has been specifically earmarked for, um, for um, applicants that have less than 50 employees. So they're really trying to make sure that the money gets into the hands of the smallest of the small businesses that have been impacted, you know, more severely than some of the larger ones. But as of today, they have not published any um, deadline for the application to um, drop off. Great. So there's still t definitely time to apply. Yes. And, you know, I always, I, as a person that also <laughs> works, we, we run our own grant programs and so on. We always say that the, the, the sooner the better. Um, right. But it does sound like, um, you know, that, that that would apply here, the sooner the better, but under the auspice that you need to, to be document ready. Yes. So, so as soon as you can get your documents ready. Um, then, then apply, um, get that application in. Um, that's great. Um, uh, we are. Uh, we've been getting a couple of uh, questions here from the chat, so uh, we've been able to answer those. If there's anyone else that that would like to submit a question to the chat, please do, and we can go ahead and um, and make sure that we get your question answered. Um, I, Keith, I'm going to go ahead and go, kind of go back to you too um, in regards to the program. Um, and the, uh, the the things that you talked about earlier about some of the the things that you're seeing that have, have prevented people from applying or maybe they applied and, and they were declined. But um, within this program itself, I you know what what would be some of uh, your you know if you're local and or, or regional and you need some help with this this grant, do you have is there are there some resources that um, that you'd suggest? Uh, we, we did post the um, the SBA's um, website in the chat, and we put the helpline for the SBA on there, the 800 number. So, Yeah, sure. Um, well, the Small Business Development Center here at FAMU for um, those local businesses, we are available to assist you um, at no cost. Um, we're open from Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock until 5 o'clock. We have... Um, five certified business consultants that have experience in helping um, clients apply and helping you compile the required information. And they will sit down with you and walk you through the process, hold your hand as you work through the process, as if, if anything comes up that is beyond our, our scope of, of, of knowledge, um, we have a, a direct line to uh, technical assistance at SBA. And um, we have a network of eight other small business development centers throughout the entire state of Florida. We cover an eight county region, but okay. we have sister centers and in every other region throughout all 67 counties in Florida offering the same level of assistance at no cost. So um, I would just say, you know, we're here to help you. Um, we, uh, we, you know, welcome you um, if, if, and also I'd like to mention, because one of the things that I, I think may have created a stumbling block from the beginning was the access to technology. So, you know, you have to, everything is done online. Um, so you have to make sure 
that you have um, you're, you're submitting your application with the right internet browser. Um, you have access to a valid email because a lot of the communication, most of all of the communication is done through a valid email address. So we've got a computer um, workspace at the Small Business Development Center. So you are welcome to come in again between our hours of operation. Um, use our computers. Um, you can, if you want to print out documents there, you can print those documents out. Um, so there's just a, a, a ton of resources. We don't currently have a SCORE chapter in, in Tallahassee, but if you're outside of Tallahassee, SCORE is another resource that will be able to assist you. There are also um, women business assistance centers um, throughout the state that provide the same level of assistance, again, all at no cost. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. And then uh, I'm just going to make a plug here for uh, COCA can also help facilitate. If you need to find these places, we can help you facilitate that and get you connected with the right people. We also, um, I'm on a call every week with Americans for the Arts, which is on a call every day with the SBA. And so, um, especially if you're having very specific problems, like there are some um, club owners that have not been, they've gotten awards and, and there might be some, uh, they haven't actually gotten uh, paid yet. And so Americans for the Arts is also helping uh, pass that information along and working with the SBA so that everybody can can get those those uh, technical issues uh, solved. So that's how COCA can also help out with this. Um, there is another question in, in the chat here. I know we're running, we're running down to the wire here, but here's one more question. And that is if the organization whose budgets are small enough for the IRS to require a postcard, would a postcard be a tax return? And so when we're talking about being document ready. No, no, no. Okay. So there you go. So no. <laughs> One other organization that I would recommend is NEVA national independent venues association, N I V A Google them. They have been very, very helpful in answering questions and guiding folks uh, to the right places uh, in completing the application and administering uh, the funds once you get them. So there are other sources available. NEVA is one that I've used uh, successfully. That's terrific. Well, and if you go to um, our COCA Tallahassee Arts Guide, um, then at Tallahassee Arts, we have a, actually a whole SBA section. So we've basically taken SBA and NEVA and like Americans for the Arts, and like we have all these links listed there. And if that's if you want a shortcut to that information, you know, give us a call or, or, or pop us an email. Um, we're at info at uh, TallahasseeArts.org. Uh, you can give us a call at 850-224-2500 and we can get you connected with the right people. So, um, so we're wrapping up. Um, we're wrapping up now. We got just a couple minutes left. So I wanted just to, is there a, a, any any last uh, parting thoughts um, from any of you before we, we go? We've got about two minutes left. Keep the music alive. <laughs> Do it. Exactly. Live performance. Exactly. So wow. that's true. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, you know, this has been so delightful spending, you know, I get so privileged in this position to spend time with amazing people like all of you. And so thank you so much for being here today to our esteemed panelists, to everyone that's joined us on Facebook, um, on, uh, on TikTok and, and Instagram and, and all the other places that we're streaming uh, that, that have uh joined us. Thank you so much. This is being recorded. So this will be posted both on the Domi site and on the uh, uh, the COCA's uh, re resources website. I'm just so delighted that we were able to do this. So I want to just thank you so much um, to our guests today, to, uh, to to Doc and to Gary, to Theresa and Keith for um, all of the great advice and that you've passed on to us and all the helpful tips. Um, I want to give a special thank you to our co-partner in this, that you did all the heavy lifting in the tech and the setup to Robert Blackledge and Carol uh, Holbert from Domi for co-hosting this event. And um, these kinds of partnerships are so important to make sure that our, our community is great and, and uh, does wonderful things. So um, with that, um, please come to the next event, check out Domi's website site, um, and uh, COCA. And uh, we're going to continue to do these smart webinars, um, but check us out in the meantime for all the events and, and um, uh, 
professional development like this uh, event that we have here. Uh, we're also like us on Facebook, Instagram, on TikTok. And the biggest thing is get those SFOG applications in. You know where to go now in order to get that help. And thank you all so much for joining us today. So be safe, get vaccinated, and we look forward to seeing you at upcoming events. Thanks again for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for doing this. Thank you again. Thank you.